Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about where and how to EQ bass guitar. And this Magic Frequency video series I've been doing seems to be really popular, and I saw a lot of comments in the other videos asking to do one of these about the Magic Frequencies for bass. So, here we go. All right, this is the bass track I'm gonna be working with. So it's just a DI. Pretty boring sounding DI actually. And I'm just gonna leave the compression and saturation on as I'm going through these EQ tips just to give you a better idea of what the final sound actually is. And there's a Sans Amp plugin just to give it a little bit of uh, an amp tone and not such a dry, boring DI. So there are two points that you wanna focus on when it comes to EQing the bass, the presence and the size. So the presence is obviously the, the upper mid-range frequencies. This is like the, the pick attack. This is the part of the bass that you wanna be able to hear on small speakers or even hear the strumming of the bass on like an iPhone speaker, right? That's the presence part of it. And then there's also the size and that's the bottom end. That's the oomph, the, the power in the low end. That's the, the rumble that you feel in the chest. And you just wanna try and get the balance of those two right for the song. So let's start with the presence, and the first magic frequency I'm gonna talk about is 1K. So let's pull up the SSL channel here. So you can hear right away, this is helping the mid-range of the bass come through on, on small speakers. So definitely if you're listening on, on earbuds or anything small like that, you're probably gonna notice this a lot more. sometimes can sound kind of nasally. And this is why, again, you don't want to mix in solo. I say that all the time. Right now, I'm just soloing the bass and drums so you can hear what I'm doing. But in the context of a mix, you want to have the guitars in and really crank up this, this 1K area to find, like, you might need a lot more than you think in order to have it mesh with the guitars and actually hear the bass on all speakers. And sometimes, depending on the track that you have, depending on the bass, you might need to go even a bit lower than this. I, I've had mixes where I'm boosting like 700 or 750 or 800 on the bass instead of 1K. You know, if it's if it's super nasally, but I still need some, some more mid-range content in there. Show you what that sounds like. And the higher up you go, the more it's gonna sound kind of grindy and aggressive. And then the lower you go, it's gonna sound more boxy and nasally. But 1K is pretty much the sweet spot on 90% of bass guitars that you're gonna EQ. So let's stick with it around there. And then let's move on to magic frequency number two, which is just above it, really close, 1.5K. And this is the area I'm targeting for that pick attack and for that grind and, and aggression and energy. So check this out. I usually do it with a bell boost on the SSL channel here. So even though it's so close to the 1K boost I already did, you can hear the difference here, how it's way more of a, of a pick attack and a way more of an aggressive kind of punchy sound up here at 1.5. And this is really gonna depend on the genre you're mixing. You know, for something kind of soft and mellow, you probably don't want a lot of that bright attack and aggression out of the bass guitar, but something heavier where you've got some distortion on the bass, you probably want a little more of that. That's gonna give you that aggressive, grindy sound. Now, after this high mid boost around 1.5K, you wanna follow that up with the third magic frequency, which is 4K, and this is for a low pass filter. This is really just to get rid of the noise that kind of comes up in the higher end of the frequency spectrum. On a bass like this that's fairly clean, I'm using a fairly clean tone here, right? You're not gonna have too much of that noisy like distortion, but on something metal and heavy, you're gonna wanna filter out all of that high end like sound that it's, it's almost like a guitar amp, right? But a bass fuzz pedal would, would give you those high nasty frequencies as well. You don't need that in the mix. All of that aggression you can get in the 1.5 to 2K range that we already boosted. So usually around 4K, I'm just 
cutting everything off there. By the way, all these frequencies I'm mentioning here are on my mixing cheat sheet. Gives you the go-to starting points for EQ and compression, not only for bass, but for every other track in the mix as well. It's totally free. Just go to mixcheatsheet.com if you want to pick that up. Now, before I get to the low frequencies for the bass and how to handle those, I got to say, I've been on a journey over the years with mixing bass, and I used to make it a lot more complex than what you're seeing here. You know, lots of different EQ moves, lots of different dynamic processing, sometimes splitting up the bass into like low and mid and high tracks and trying to blend them all together and process them differently. And of course, it all starts with a good source track. You need a good bass guitar. You need a good performance. It needs to be in tune. It needs to be tight. And if you start with that as a prerequisite, then you can keep the EQing and the mixing pretty simple and get a nice, big, solid bass sound. Because of that, I very rarely cut any frequencies on a bass guitar. I just adjust the amount of presence and the amount of low end size and I leave the rest alone. And typically after the compression, the saturation and everything else that I do, that fills out the low end range like really well without having to mess with all the other frequencies. So you don't need to get really crazy with bass, just keep it as simple as you can. And that brings me to the last magic frequency, which isn't really an, a single frequency, it's a range. I'm just gonna call it below 100 hertz. And I deal with these frequencies as a group. It's like a range of notes that the bass is gonna play in a song. So for example, if the track is in drop D, then the fundamental frequency of that low D is gonna be about 73 hertz. So pretty much all the low notes they're gonna play are gonna be between like 70 and let's say like 120 or something, up to 100, 146, I guess, for the, the full octave there. My goal is to grab the whole low octave of the range that the bass is playing and then control those, and then EQ just how much of that group of frequencies that I want, because the low fundamentals is moving around a lot, right? Depending on what the bass is playing. And I wanna make sure that some of those notes don't jump out too much, and some of them don't disappear too much. They, I want it to feel really solid with that low end kind of size and rumble, no matter what note the bass player is playing. So let me show you how I accomplish that. So the first thing I usually do is give it a little bit of a boost in the low end. So let's do it around 70 on this track here. Now I've got to throw on my headphones so I'm actually here. Now this just depends on the source track, of course. I'm just trying to excite that low end a little bit before I go and compress and, and really control it and dial it in. Just, just try to boost it until you start to feel that low end, until it starts to balance out the presence boost that you did and you get more of an even sound again. Don't get too crazy with it. Just start to hear and feel that low end. And now here's the key. After that boost, I'm gonna try and control and compress those frequencies independently of, of all the rest of the frequencies on the bass. So to do that, I'm gonna use this plugin called Low Control. I actually built this plugin myself, designed it myself with my company, Black Salt Audio, specifically for this purpose. So on this plugin, you see it says compress below. So I'm gonna set this to about 100 Hertz. Remember, I'm trying to compress all those frequencies below 100 as a group. So check this out. So I'm compressing all those frequencies below 100, controlling that so that as he's moving from note to note, my low end is staying very consistent. Now, once I do that, I basically have the, the output gain fader, the makeup gain fader for those low frequencies that have been compressed. And what that does is just puts all those low frequencies on a single fader that I can just move up and down and get the amount of low end that I want in the mix. So from here, it gets really simple because all I have to do is just bounce back and forth between a couple reference tracks to just listen to how much of that sub low end rumble is in a typical commercial mix. And then I just move this fader up or down to try and get that amount of low end. Now, 
Now I haven't referenced here, but for this song, it's probably somewhere around there. So let's go back to the NS10s and let's just make sure our presence is dialed in. Probably don't need quite as much as I added here. By the way, you know that your bass is at a good level when you don't necessarily pick it out as like a focal point of the mix, but when you mute it, the whole thing just kind of falls apart. So there you go, the magic frequencies for bass guitar. 1K, 1.5K, 4K for the low pass filter, and then the group of frequencies below about 100 hertz. And even though I've talked about four different frequency points here, I still want you to try and think of this as just very simple, just two areas, the presence and the low end size. Just find the right balance depending on the song and depending on the source track that you've got. And I've honestly found that the more crazy tricks and dynamic, crazy processing you try to do with the low end, the more you might run into some issues and you might have some translation issues. And ultimately it's, it's more of a mental thing too. You kind of just lose perspective. It's, it's hard to hear these low frequencies. You know, they, they kind of go everywhere and they're kind of mushy, right? You, you can't like, it, it's not so defined like boosting 8K on a snare and you just hear that really sharp defined crack. It's not like that on bass. The frequencies are, are just kind of more fluid, I guess. So because they're harder to nail down, it's, it's easy to do too much and you start to lose perspective and you don't even know what's good anymore. So the more simple you can keep it, the better. Now, when it comes to getting a really great solid low end for your mix, there's more to it than just the EQ of the bass guitar. And I actually think a lot of the videos out there on YouTube about mixing low end, a lot of the tips that are given there are just backwards and wrong. So if you wanna hear my three controversial tips for a great low end, check out this video right here.